What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to Nitro Gaming. I am excited today because I've only got 1,100 coins. And if you've watched my last few videos, you'll know I have a few more than that. So where'd they all go? What did I invest in? What did I buy? I'm going to tell you in like 30 seconds. But we got the Max 87 base icon upgrade yesterday, which of course brought the market down. It was Wednesday anyway. Then we had division rival rewards. And so I thought, all right, I've got to spend every single coin I have which we did. We went out and got those uh, got those cards. But what I will say, this had an impact on the market and not in exactly the way the entire community was expecting. But if you watched yesterday's video, I don't think we've dropped a video yet this year like the Icon SBC market crash video that we literally uploaded yesterday where everything we talked about came true. Like it was, we nailed it on the head. And so we are crushing it right now. As you can see by my transfer list, bunch of Griezmann, bunch of De Jong, bunch of Barella, bunch of Chuameni. And in total, it adds up to 23 Barellas for about 29,750, 11 Griezmanns for 99k. We've got 16 De Jong for 79,500, 24 Chuamenis for 17,000 coins. Those are all of my investments right there. I would have started this video with my division rival rewards, with division four upgraded rewards, but you don't want to see those, so I'll spare you. Do you want to afford Mbappe right now? Then check out Loot Bar. Not only are they already cheaper than the other platforms, but when you use my code NITRO, you're going to get another 8% off of that and 5% more coins than what you bought. You can even buy specific players on their site now too. It has great reviews, big creators use it, and you get your coins within a few minutes. So if you need quick coins, Loot Bar is the place to go. The market is in the mud right now, but it was to be expected on this Thursday morning because the Icon SBC brought the market down heavily on Wednesday during content release, and the market stayed low. We picked up some cards during this time for Griezmann, De Jong, and Chuameni because they're out of packs, but then we also went out and bought with the rest of our coins a bunch of Barellas down when the market was at 54 points during the Rivals Reward Market Crash, which happens every single Thursday morning, and so we bought some more cards then. And we bought Barella for a reason. It's the same reason right now, if you take a look at the cards that have gone up the most in the last 24 hours, Kvart Shkelia is up in price a lot. That Napoli inform right there, 21%. And that's pretty weird for a day where the entire market goes down. Why would Kvart Shkelia be up in price? Well, you can also look at DeMarco. He's up 10% right now. You look at Bremer. He's up about 10% right now. There's a lot of cards that have gone up in price. Even Ruben Loftus-Cheek, who's getting close to that 300k point uh, that we were kind of waiting on. I sold my cards for about 290k uh, before content release yesterday yesterday for Ruben Loftus-Cheek. We made some coins on him, but I think he does go higher, especially now that we know that we are getting a Di Lorenzo SBC. It actually got leaked just after our video went up yesterday. So unlucky timing there for, you know, not covering it yesterday. But to be honest, maybe a good thing, because if we take a look over on the market for cards like Nico Barella, and the reason that I went out and picked his card up, and he's 33,000 coins right now, we got him for like 30K or less, so profit, not a ton yet, but take a look at his hourly graph over the course of the last day. He went from 36,000 coins, then the Di Lorenzo SBC got leaked. So many people went out and bought that card. He went from 36 to 47K, but that Di Lorenzo SBC didn't come out yesterday. It's not guaranteed to even come out today or tomorrow. It will be soon, but it's no guarantee that it comes out yesterday or today, and that's what happened. It didn't come out, and so that card went from 47,000 coins all the way down to 28.8K. So that's a big drop. I mean, 20K on a card that quickly, I think that there's some value in a rebound there. And that's the reason I decided that during the drop uh, for Division Rival Rewards that we'd pick those cards up for 30,000 coins. Now, right now, he's not up a ton, but that Di Lorenzo SBC could come out. And that's also got a link to Serie A, and it's got a link to Italy. So I think this Borella card could do well. But it's proving that out-of-pack investments are by far the best this year because Kavicha Kvaratskhelia is not in packs. And as you can see, even though he spiked up to over 100,000 coins and did drop back down, just like the Barella, as you can see, that card started at 78K. He went up to 104, but he only dropped to like 90. So even if you bought at 78 and you didn't sell at his peak before content release, well, you're still doing just fine. You're making a lot of coins. The same cannot be said for Nicolo Barella investors. If they bought uh, yesterday morning, 
So out of pack investments just seem like the way to go for division rival rewards investing. And well, it kind of proves the same because we invested in Griezmann's gold card. We also invested in De Jong's gold card and we invested in Chuameni's gold card. And if we take a look at that De Jong card, who was 78 to 80,000 coins for pretty much the entirety of yesterday, you take a look at that card uh, over the course. This is not the correct card. That's the card we're looking for. Um, if we look at his graph, as you can see yesterday, he was about 80,000 coins, 70,000, uh, 9,000 coins all day. And then now he is 90K. He has gone up 10,000 coins per card. And may I remind you, we've got 16 of these cards. If we sold right now, of course, we're going to have about four to 5,000 coin tax. We'd only make 6K per card, but that still adds up at 14 cards or 16 cards, whatever it was. Um, and it's probably going to go a lot higher. And if we take a look at Griezmann, the exact same idea. We picked up his gold card for 100,000 coins or 96K. He's 114K. This is just two hours after rewards. They're going to go higher. And I'll show you why I know this. And Chuameni is the last card. We'll go ahead and show it just because I have 24 of him. But he's about 20,000 coins. Now we got for 17K. Take a look at last week. Araujo. This card of course, was in packs, the Road to the Knockout Team 2. So we invested in the 85 rated version that wasn't in packs. And he had already gone up a little bit during the week, but as you can see, he was about 100K. He was basically the same price as Griezmann. After the rewards, he rose up to 114K. Does seem a little bit familiar, right? If we, we just looked at Griezmann, he was 114K, but he also got to 120,000 coins before content. And even Thursday night, Friday morning, he got to 127K. And that's really when you want to sell. Now, if you sold anywhere in that night, you're looking good, but you don't want to sell at 114K when it shows that in previous weeks, these cards have gone much higher in the coming hours. Now, Marquee Matchups is going to come out at 6 p.m. UK, but these cards aren't back in packs until Friday at content. Now, you definitely want to sell a few hours before Friday at content because it peaked at 127K. That was about three hours before content. It started dropping very quickly as we got closer. And then once it went back in packs, crashed all the way down to 93K. So you definitely want to get out a few hours before content on Friday, but there's no rush to sell on Thursday. You don't have to sell before content if these cards are out of packs. Now for Barella, it's a little bit more complicated because if that DiLorenzo SBC doesn't come out today, then Marquee Matchups is going to have an impact on his price. But I think I'm going to hold. I think I'm just going to hold on to that Barella and see what happens. But I am going to sell before content on Friday just because we know that content on Friday could bring a lot of supply and we don't really want to risk it. Now, we also have some other leaks. If we want to go for new out-of-pack investments, well, we've got some new cards that have been leaked for the next promo. And one of those is a very big card, Alexia Puteas. This card, 91 rated, her base card is like 500,000 coins. We'll take a look at it in a minute. But that's going to be a very big total rush card. And it's also going to be a card that we're going to try to flip on Friday as long as we can actually afford it with whatever the amount of coins we have after we sell everything. I should have, you know, over 3.5 million, maybe close to 4 million coins. I think that'll be able to afford a total rush Alexia Puteas to flip on Friday. So make sure you subscribe to the channel right now so you don't miss out on any of that content. We're also getting Mohamed Salah, another very, very big card. Um, these stats are predictions. We actually don't have the stats leaked this week. We had stats leaked for team one. We don't have it for team two. Then we also have Neymar. Now his gold card, I think may be good out of packs. We'll see. Uh, but I think he's one of the more underrated cards in the game. It's just really tough to link now that he's moved to the Saudi league. Then we've also got Messi leaked for the promo. We have Verts leaked for the promo and we have Lewandowski leaked for the promo. All of these cards could be safe out of pack investments. But just understand that for most of these cards that do go out of packs, and I say most because you take a look at Frank de Jong, well, he went out of packs on Friday and he has pretty much only risen since. Uh, he was 54,000 coins. He is getting closer and closer to doubling in price in a week. So some of these cards could keep rising, but if we take a look at cards like Griezmann, it was similar to the uh, Araujo, who uh, I guess he dropped a little bit over the last five minutes. Um, but as you can see, he didn't rise as much during that week. He went out of packs, you know, he used 86K. He went out of packs at about 94,000 coins. Um, and then 
he hasn't risen a ton throughout the week. You know, he's 98K still yesterday. This was the first big spike that we saw from him over the last couple of hours. So some of those cards don't rise a ton over the week. So just understand if you're making an investment, you're probably going to hold until next Thursday. That's the idea. You want to hold these cards for a full week. Now, are they going to make you profit? Yes, absolutely. So if you want a safe investment, all of these uh, base gold cards are probably pretty good. I, I, I don't know if I'd go all the way up to Puteas, given the fact that she is so high rated uh, and expensive in, in the game. Um, maybe a little riskier with the tax that comes with those kind of prices, but there's definitely a lot of options here with the leaked Total Rush team. Speaking of safe investments, we're back to calling fodder safe investments because they dropped over the last 24 hours. These cards crashed at content release. It was part of the market crash that came with the Icon SBC. So many people invested in it. And we mentioned it in yesterday's video how all of these cards went up in price quite a bit. If we take a look at Bernardo Silva, who's 16.5K uh, or 17,000 coins right now, you look at this Bernardo Silva, this card went from 17,000 coins all the way up to 20.5K. Yet there was no SBCs during that time that were any good. No SBCs that were good. And so these, these cards went up in price. These fodder cards went up because of just artificial investment. People were buying so many of these, expecting them to go to the moon because of the Icon SBC. But fellas, this Icon SBC is not repeatable. There are so many people that invested over the course of the last week. The bubble was obviously going to pop unless this Icon SBC was amazing value. And if we take a look at the Icon SBC votes... It's not bad value. It's probably the best SBC we've had over the course of the last four or five days, but it's kind of split 50-50. It's not the greatest SBC. It's not bad. I, I honestly think 194K, I would upvote that uh, for that price, but it's not like ridiculously good value. You have to go out and do it. Everybody needs to do it, you know? It wasn't that kind of SBC. We haven't seen that yet. So fodder cards went back down because, you know, that bubble had to pop, and it did. But it also gives another opportunity to invest. I mean, you're looking at 88s for 16.5K. Get them on bid for 15 or 16. They'll hit 20K again. Even 89s I really like. For 22 or 21,000 coins, I mean, guys, that's going to hit 28, 29K at some point in the next two weeks. It'll happen. And the same thing happened last year. It took until late October before these fodder cards really went to the the moon. So you can stay patient if you're still holding, uh, but realistically, you just want to sell into the next big hype that pushes these cards up so much like they did this time. Um, of course, rewards have brought them down a little bit right now. You're looking at 1.4K for 84s. Get them on bid for 1.2, 1.3. That's close to as low as you can get them. And they're going to double at some point. These cards will hit 2.5K. Just book it right now. You can hold these cards for a while. I know a lot of investors who have 10 million coins already who have just put all of their coins into 84 red. It's waiting for them to double in price because going from 1.4K to 2.7K, it's not out of the question by any means. And that could happen literally in the next two weeks. But by Black Friday, absolutely it's going to happen. And that's in November, of course. Uh, pretty much any rating between the, uh, the likes of 84 all the way up to 89 I like right now. Pretty solid prices on all of those. You could even go in at discard price on 83 rated cards, but at the current price for 84s, I think 84s have more value than the 83s. That's just my opinion, but you could go 83s. Uh, they'll come off the ground at some point as well, but who knows how high they'll actually go. But that's my take on fodder cards right there. And that's basically all I've got for you guys today. Pretty much a recap of yesterday and introducing some new investments for that DiLorenzo, like the Kvartschkelia, the DeMarco, the Barella, uh, for you guys to look at, as well as out-of-pack investments going into Total Rush Team number 2. If you enjoyed, don't forget to drop a like on the video. Subscribe to Nitro Gaming down below. Subscribe to Nitro Football. The other channel down below, I'll have a new video coming out next week on that channel. I've kind of been neglecting it as FC25 came out, and I've been just grinding this channel's content. But we'll have more content back on the main channel very soon. I'll see you then. Peace out.